All right, good evening and welcome. Welcome, brothers and sisters. You've made it. Welcome. You've made it to another live broadcast here at BWE, Black Wealth Empowerment Live. So welcome. We're happy that you decided to be here with us today. We're bringing you broadcast 147. Can you believe that? 147? 147 broadcasts. Can you say wow and praise be to God? Brothers and sisters, we're excited to bring you another ex a broadcast live here. We hope that you decide to be with us and you're going to watch us for the duration of the hour of power. It only takes an hour to do what we need to do here at Black Wealth Empowerment Live. We want to bring you a message, an inspiring message, a motivating message, a message that will raise our conscious level just a little bit higher. They say there's a saying that goes like this, inch by inch, it's a cinch, right? Yard by yard, it's hard. So let's take it inch by inch, brothers and sisters, and use that inch to build momentum in our lives, to build momentum so our activity and our momentum can outpace the time that we spend been, been, uh, uh, building momentum. See if our productivity can outpace, can supersede, the time that we spend, then that's a plus gain. That's a plus gain, brothers and sisters. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Excited to bring you another topic here that, that will take us to the next level individually as a people. Purpose-driven wealth strategies. Purpose-driven wealth strategies. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. My name is Daryl Muhammad coming to you live from a, whoo, from a hot city of Houston. It's been over 95 degrees for golly, I guess about two weeks now, sometime breaking 100 uh, Fahrenheit. But it feels like it's 105, 106. So I'm coming to you live from Houston, Texas. Happy to be with you celebrating Ramadan with those of us who are celebrating Ramadan. I pray that you're having a blessed Ramadan. Your Ramadan is strong and it's getting stronger every day, brothers and sisters. So welcome. And we want you to get ready to listen to some information that if you're listening for it, you'll hear it. If you're looking for it, you'll see it. Those are just basic principles. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and ye shall find. So we're going to bring it to you, but you have to take it. You have to consume it. You have to use it to empower yourself. That's why this is called Black Wealth empowerment, black wealth empowerment, brothers and sisters. So hopefully uh, later on in this broadcast, my co-host will be joining me, uh, Rodney Asad Muhammad and Sister Brandy. They should be joining us any second now, joining us so they can join you, join me in broadcast 147. Can you believe that? 147. Because of you, we're here. And because of us, you're here. So continue to show up. Continue to show up. Well, I know things happen in life as life often does. I know sometimes we fall off the wagon. We have to get up, brush ourselves off, and get back on the wagon and continue down the road. So I understand that. But see, it's consistency. The Bible says it like that. It's not to the strong or the swiftest. But to the one who endure, who presses through, who's consistent, who's determined, who endureth to the end. And the end is when you can't go any further. And at the end of life, it's called death. Our condolences goes out to the Farrakhan family for the loss of our brother, Louis Farrakhan Jr. He made his transition yesterday morning, May. Allah be pleased with him, but our heart goes out to everyone who grieves, especially the Farrakhan family and those in the nation of Islam who grieve along with the family. We pray that Allah will bless you with his peace and he will bless you with his abundance of gratitude for having Lewis with us 60 years. So may Allah bless the Farrakhan family. Brothers and sisters, we are happy that you decided to be with us. We can't take life for granted. Death is a, is a sour reminder 
on how sweet life should be. No matter what you're going through, brothers and sisters, life should always be sweeter than death. Should always be sweeter than death, brothers and sisters. So remember that. And don't waste a second. We're going to talk about purpose driven wealth strategies. And joining us is our brother, the courage coach, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, sliding in the home safe for the winning score. Bro, right on your side, can you hear us? Can you see us? We got a little different setup. We got that, that's that, that's that Don, that's that Don Mafia setup there, bro. What you got there, bro? <laughs> there you go, buddy. Can you hear me well? Yes, sir. You coming in? Oh, you coming in loud and loud and clear, Don Juan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in the Don chair right now. You know, keep it try to keep it warm from the real Don. You know, <laughs> but peace, everybody. I'm right inside Muhammad, your courage coach, coming in from an undisclosed location in Phoenix, Arizona, right now. Uh, you know, we're doing some big things, moving and shaking, and so I'm, you know, in the office here. And decided, you know what? I'm a, I'm a, maybe I gotta get in. I said, I got BWE tonight. I got BWE tonight. And so I got on doing it on my phone. It's one of the probably the only second time I think I've done it on from my phone because I didn't want to go home from where I am, go back to my other location, and uh, and then get all set up and get in and be so many minutes late. And so I said, no, the the members don't deserve that. They deserve you know, for me to, to, to come in when I can from wherever I can and give them whatever it is that God has put on my heart to give them. And so here I am. I'm going to give my earpiece coming in right here. Now, brothers and sisters, you're in for an absolute treat as usual. This is Black Wealth Empowerment, the live experience, you know, and here's where a place where you want to come in. You want to make sure you have a pen and a pad ready. You want to take notes because something's going to be said. Not something in the singular, but some things are going to be said that you're going to uh, going to hear. Uh, something's going to spark something in your mind, going to cause you to want to write something down and you want to be ready. Because I found over my many, many years of just being an entrepreneur and just being a, a, a thinker and a creator that ideas come anytime. They'll come at the just the weirdest moments. I remember one time many, many years ago, Brother Daryl. Uh, where I was in the bed, I was sleeping. This is back when I was just very deep in the music industry. And this song came in my head. It was powerful. Oh, this song was brilliant. It was amazing. I mean, and for me, for, for some music to really get me excited, it means it's really good. And so I heard, oh, man, I was sleeping. It was just playing. I was the, it was the best. And I figured, oh, that's nice. Man, in the morning, I'm a I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that down. We're going to record that. So I drifted on back into deep sleep again. And then I woke up and couldn't remember the melody. I think it go kind of, oh, and there it was right there. And it taught me something at 15 and 16 years old to keep a pad and a pen nearby so I could always jot something down. Well, now with the advent of, of te this higher technology and whatnot, you can record things on your phone, use the little note app on your phone to jot something down. Something comes, an idea, a thought, or maybe you can make this better. Jot it down. Even if you don't move on to it immediately, you should at least want to lock it in into that tangible format. So that way, at some point, you get an opportunity to do it. Now, if you hold on to it too long, it's still, even though you fixed it, it still will end up in somebody else's brain if you don't act on it soon enough. So this is the place where you come in and you make sure you have something ready to jot down some information, uh, write it down and, and, and go back over it and apply, apply, apply. So Black Wealth Empowerment is here. It's the hour of power. I'm riding inside Muhammad. I'm swinging back over Brother Daryl. He's going to let you know how you can participate in this live broadcast. I know you can't talk with us right now. You can get in a private elusive exclusive Facebook group and send a message and say, oh, I want, got a question about this. And I heard you all say that. What do you mean by this? And how can I implement that in my life? Now, we won't go into a full coaching session, right? Because that, that, there's, a, there's a fees associated with a full-on coaching session. But we'll give you some, some tidbits here and there to kind of, you know, get you moving in the right coaching direction, right? So that way you can get yourself set up for the real full coaching programs, right? Contact Brother Dale. Contact myself. We're here for you. Now, we handle different areas. Now, if it's something that you need that I know Brother Daryl is uh, absolutely skilled in, I, I, can't, I won't be your coach. 
I'm going to swing you over to Brother Daryl and say, no, you know what? No, you need Brother Daryl to specifically work with you because he's going to be able to give you the tools and techniques you need in order to get to that level of what you're trying to do. Same thing to him. He'll swing you up and say, no, no, you need, a, you need a whole mindset shift. You know, I can't work with you yet. You need a mindset shift. You know, and so we are uniquely uh, uh, genetically coded to handle things at a different level. Now, if you whining and cry baby and, and whatnot, you, Brother Daryl ain't going to want to talk to you about Brother Daryl. He's a different kind of brother. So just be mindful that different coaches for different folks and different levels of development. There's a certain point when you got your mindset down, I can't, I, I gotta, I gotta move you over, you know, to the next level. So, okay, now you got to start working with Brother Daryl so he can get you, get your economics right. And you, you're going to take it to that next level on that, you know, this business act, uh, uh, environment. So this is what you want to do. Uh, and let me see, can I, can I do that? Can I, can I do that like that? Brother Darryl? Did that work? Did that work, brother? Darryl? No, sir. See that no, work? sir. No, no, you got me sideways, huh? They got me sideways, yeah. huh? Okay, there we go. You can't turn right, your I'm camera. Sorry. Your whole entire camera can't turn to where's your your your. Camera, let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Lead. Let me see what it do. Let me see if I do it that way. See if I if I do it. Will it turn if I no, do that? Let me see. No, that's here. that's the other lens. Okay. Oh, it turned me around. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. So now, nah, right now, I think this is what I got. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, so Talk thank you very much, brother. Brother. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, brothers and sisters, you know, life is serious. See, life should be serious most of the time, majority of the time, and then you carve out some time for recreation. Then you carve out some time for playing. You know, there's something that I learned many, many years ago. They say you can pay now, right, and play later, or you can play now and pay later because the bottom line is you have to pay either way and it's part of you know human being is part of life to recreate to have fun right the bible says too much of anything is not good so we don't want too much of anything but we have to understand they both go hand to hand like life and death go hand to hand they walk together so does recreation Right. And and purposefulness. We're going to talk about that tonight because we as black people, we have to we have we have to tilt that needle more over to the purpose side. Game coming on tonight. And some of us not going to miss the game. And let me just say this. And the coach can definitely teach on this another time or add this uh, add in a chime chime in. See, we look at ourselves as individuals, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and we keep it isolated to our individuality. Just me and I and everything's focused on me and mine and what affects me and how I feel and, and how things look from my perspective. But see, that is not the absolute. The absolute includes us. The absolute includes all of us. So we make up, we make up a universal body of black people, a universal body of people in your city, a universal body of people in your state, and then America, and then the world. See, so the majority of people, as, as this body becomes bigger, or we expand to include more people, especially here in America, this body spends a whole lot of time on recreation, and very little time on being on purpose. See, so, we'll, so we contribute to that as individuals. So as you and I as individuals, if we be more in line to what life should be, and that's living life on purpose. So whenever the death angel comes and snatches us, then we'll have some purpose behind us. You know, I was at the mosque today and I was talking to some brothers and and I do what I do as, as I'm doing here. And Brother Rodney does what he does as he does here. See, this is just a part of us. I was talking to the brothers and and I was telling them how proud I am for for, you know, their entrepreneurship and, and what they're doing. And one brother is helping us with our, 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 our goods uh, from the farm. Another brother has his uh, 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 his drink that he has was a Kofi. Uh, Kefra, Kefra, something like that, you know. Uh, so I was I was complimenting them and encouraging them, and they were reciprocating back to me. And so and one brother said, "Oh, brother Daryl, you should write a book of motivation." I said, "Brother, that's fine, you know, but I'd rather write a book of history 
Because motivation quotes of words, but history is what is done, is action. I prefer the right some history than a book of motivation. But I, I understand what he was saying, and I appreciate it. And really, a lot of times, brothers and sisters, if you want to be honest with yourself, when you self-correct, that's for self. See, when you correct and, and see, that's constantly a paradigm shift. So I receive what he's saying, but in my mind, I got to do more. In my mind, I got to do more. I got to do. I can't get caught up in the rhetoric. I can't get caught up in, in words. I, my actions have to speak for me. So when you live on purpose, you get beyond pontification. You get beyond a whole bunch of words and in motivation. Will you being motivated to do what is the question? So brother says, now it's time for you to do something. Oh yeah, you got to do something. God put you on this earth to do something, not eight hours a day at work, but every second of the day, you should be doing something. Every second of the day, your heart is beating. It's following the instructions of God. Every day that you're living, you're breathing. Your lungs are you know, taking in oxygen every second of the day, your brain is working. They're being obedient to the instructions of God. So we have to do more of that. We have to be more obedient. There's something we should always be doing, consciously doing. Those things are done unconsciously, but there's things we should be doing un uh, consciously. And here's what I want you to do. We want to welcome you. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can pitch in. Those who are watching us on a private platform at, at here at BW, you can watch this. You can participate. If you're watching the replay, you're not exempt. Everybody can do something whenever they show up. There's always work to be done, especially on self. So those of you who are watching us in our private platform here at BWE, right above, we put some tabs, right above this video, some tabs. And they're there so you can press them continuously throughout this hour of power. The first one is the Facebook like. Go ahead and hit that and hit that a couple of times and hit that again a couple of times. What that does, that lets Facebook know that you love our private elusive exclusive Facebook page. Black Wealth Empowerment, private elusive exclusive Facebook page. That lets them know. You know, Facebook is under a lot of scrutiny right now as far as privacy and controlling the content and manipulating content and not showing and showing and privacy policies and stuff. So let's take that. Let's take advantage of that. Let's use that to our advantage. See, now they can't block us as, 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 as easy as they used to do, Brother Rodney. So let's go ahead and hit that like, hit that like, hit that like, click, 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 click. Go ahead and hit it several different times and let them know you like the private elusive exclusive Facebook page. Next to it is Facebook. Where you hit that, that opens up. You might have to log in. That's so you can send a message and put it on your feed. Here's what I want you to do. Listen very carefully, brothers and sisters. I want you to hit that like. I mean, hit the uh, share button for Facebook, Twitter, and all the other ones that's up there. Every three minutes. Every three minutes. That's anywhere from 15, 10 to 15 times over this hour. Starting now. Every three minutes. So you want to hit the Facebook share, put in your login if you have to, hit remember me or whatever. So you want to keep on doing it. Use hashtag BWE Hangout. Hashtag BWE Hangout. And then put after that, we are live. That'll send it to your new your news feed there on Facebook. They'll see the hashtag, but even better than that, that is sending them a free ticket, a free invitation to all they did. All they have to do is hit the hit, click the link and they'll come right in as a guest of yours. How much further along would you be in life, brothers and sisters, if you had 10 people on a consistent, regular basis coming to you with invitations to things that would transform your life? How much further we all would be as black people? Well, you know, you have to lead by example. That's what leaders do. That's what people that live on purpose do. They don't wait for someone else. They're living on purpose. They're living in their purpose. So do that for Twitter. Hit it. Hashtag BW Hangout. We are live. Do that for all the platforms across the top that you have accounts with. Do it every three minutes. We're asking you to do that. 
do that every three minutes button. So those of you who are watching YouTube, right below there's some links there, I think, for Twitter and some others. But you go ahead and share, 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 share. You know, you can't be – we have to be as purposeful, Brother Rodney, as the slack talkers and gossipers. Boy, they'll call three or four people to gossip. They'll call three or four – I mean, right away. Boom, boom, boom. Let, get off. Let me call you back because I got I got I got something I need to do. And they call in two and three, four people. See, that's why it appears that the that the bad people are winning. Because bad people work hard to promote that bad message. You and I have to work. That's why we're at broadcast 147. We're not gonna let the bad people outwork us here at BWE, not between Brother Rodney and I and Sister Brandy. Then we're not gonna let them out content us. We have tapped into the to the to the unlimited resource of the universe. How, how are they going to out-content us? See, this is what Black Wealth Empowerment brings to you, brothers and sisters. We open up the universe wider and wider and wider so that you can have unlimitedness. So you can tap in. We don't want you tapping into us. We're just a vessel. We want you to tap into the source. So, brothers and sisters, share this stream right now because in about five minutes, we're going to get into the, to the nitty-gritty of it. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty of it. We're going to tell you how the purpose-driven wealth strategies, the definition of strategies is plan of action. So grab your pen, grab your pad, grab whatever you need to jot down notes. Because we're going to give you plan of actions. Because it's now it's, it's time to do it on purpose. It's time to live on purpose. It's time to take our purpose to the next level. It's time for you to share this stream again. It's been about three minutes. It's time for you to do that purposely right now. Share it, share it, share it, brothers and sisters. Share the stream because we want people here. If you're here, you should be looking for people. That you can bring here too. That's not going to happen on accident. That's going to happen on purpose. On purpose, brothers and sisters. So go ahead and share the stream again. Share it. For those of you who are already members, go to the Private Elusive Exclusive Facebook page right now and put in your information. Let us know where you're from. Let us know who you're affiliated with, church, mosque. It doesn't matter, fraternity, sorority, civic club. If it's, if it's worthy of your time, your energy, and your, and, your, and your money, then you should let the world know. You should be happy to share. Be willing to share. Every opportunity, you should share it. People wear their feelings on their sleeve. Why not wear your purpose on your sleeve? Why not wear your, wear your affiliation on your sleeve? Some people wear it on their collar. Here you go. Some people wear it on their collar. Some people wear it on their shirt like, like Courage Coach got. Lines out of the case. He's wearing his affiliation on his shirt. See, who you rolling with? Who you affiliated with? You by yourself? Would never be anything of substance or, or consequence by ourselves. Meaning that you have a... a, a a, a, a my a mentality, right? That you're 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 good enough by yourself. You're sufficient. You don't need anything exterior. I'm I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna talk about that tonight. So, brothers and sisters, share this stream. Get your people here. You know, Jesus said, "What? Unless you be like children, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven." Children be excited when they're young. Right. Some of us need stimulants to be excited. A child, they don't need no st stimulant, generally speaking, to be excited. Not when they're born and, and they're newborn and they're one and two. A after society beat them down a while, then they, then they might need, a, you know, something to excite them. So, brothers and sisters, we have to become children again. We have to manufacture the excitement and not a movie. Not entertainment. See, entertainment is that in that recreational realm, not that purposeful realm, not that realm of, of you know, definiteness. 
We have to spend more time on working on things that are definitive that we've determined. Some of us say, oh, uh, coach, courage, coach, does it have to be so serious? <laughs> life is a pretty serious thing. You just don't take life serious enough and you walk across that street when that car is coming. You'll see how serious life should be. You'll see how serious life should be, brothers and sisters. This is the hour of power. Go ahead to the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. Put your information in. We want to hear from you. If not, we're going to start deleting you because you're not present anyway. You just got your, you know, a uh, skeleton up there. Think we got memberships. We got skeletons. But if those of you who are watching by invitation, your special guests, you're watching it on my homepage or somewhere else, brothers and sisters. Those of you who are watching inside the, the private broadcast platform, then below there's a link or those is not. Let me give, give it a link. LiveVirtualNetworking.com. You can hit the link below if you're watching it on our platform. But if you're not, you're watching this on a different platform, then go to LiveVirtualNetworking.com. That'll take you straight to our Facebook page and hit join because it is a private group. Hit join. We'll vet you. Look through your profile. Make sure it looks, you know, good, clean. Look that it be. It looks like it'll be a good fit. And we'll bring you aboard as a member. All right. And those that have been members for a while, every, go scroll through and welcome some people. Welcome some new people. Welcome the new members to Black Wealth Empowerment. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome for you, those of you who are coming back. See, the grocery store got to be open. So whenever you go, the grocery store is open. Open for business, that is. See, so we're back at 147 broadcast talking Cotton mouth and spider Ramadan, we 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 hear we hear spitting. <laughs> we are spitting just as hard as, as if it wasn't Ramadan. How about you? What kind of output are you giving to us right now? Some of you all are live performers. You know how that goes. If you perform in front of a dead audience, they're not snapping their fingers, they're not clapping their hands, they're not, you know, hollering and screaming and raising the roof up. That makes it harder for you. To deliver the energy. Because that's what life is all about. Energy. So you can't have energy. Being niggardly with your energy. I learned many, many, many years ago, brothers and sisters, the very thing that you want the most, you're going to have to give up to get. So niggardly is not the way. Stingy is not the way. Now, when it's to your own detriment, brothers and sisters, go ahead and share. Share the stream. Put your information in the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group. Because that's the right thing to do. That's the thing that you need to do if you're going to be a part of this community. See, this is a community. What kind of community is it that nobody comes out of their house and speaks to their neighbor? Nobody comes out and get to know their neighbor. Nobody waves to the neighbor when they pass down the street. I don't know if that's a community. That might be just a neighborhood. But this is a community, brothers and sisters. So you put your information in the private, elusive, exclusive Facebook group and you share, you share, you share, you share. Make this community what you want it to be. All right. So let's do that right now. Brother. So we're about to swing on into the, the meat and potatoes of tonight's course. We're about to get into the subject. Purpose driven. Wealth strategies. So I'm telling you now, get your pens out, get your pencils out, get your papers, get your tablets, get your notes. Your note tablet. Get something right on, even if it's just a napkin. Some of the best plans were outlined. On a napkin. So, brothers and sisters, get ready for our brother, the Courage Coach, coming to you live from Phoenix, Arizona, to deliver us, to deliver to us the inspirational part of tonight's message so we can get this thing together, so we can live on purpose, in our purpose, purpose driven wealth strategies. But Rodney Saad, take it away, brother. 
Yes, sir. Once again, brothers and sisters, I am Rodney Asad Muhammad, your courage coach. And now on this 147th broadcast, this is powerful, brother. It's like 147. Wow, this this is powerful. You know, there are a lot of a lot of television shows very well known that did not do 147 broadcasts. Um, and most of them were 22 minute shows, right? 22 minute long shows. We used to do two hours plus easy, right? And and then we we're doing an hour of power. So we got a lot of content, brothers and sisters. And today's topic or subject, if you will, is uh, purpose-driven wealth strategies. Now, now if you, you know, I really want you to think about this just for a moment before we you know, try to get into it and, and go all into it. You know, and I'm, I'm just, just coming from what you know, God is putting in my mind, my heart to say to you all, you know, I found throughout many, many years of my life, you know, with friends in my earlier days and just growing up as, you know, a young person and whatnot, that most people, most people are just meandering along. Most people are just kind of sashaying through life, just kind of haphazardly going about some stuff as if um, there's some other life coming some uh you get a replay or redo or a new man or woman or extra extra play you know i don't know what it is but most people are living life as if there's um a, a, re, a redo coming up like I, I got some guaranteed redos you know uh i did this one thing and i got like three extra hearts on mine you know like some video game and it's kind of meander along and haphazardly do stuff and and then that's whatever it is right and and one thing i never ever ever liked was um not the people but i never liked the behavior associated with the people i had to correct myself on something a little earlier today i was telling my wife something and uh that i said i mean i don't like people i said i don't like people who blah 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 i said well no let me correct that it's not that i don't like people i don't like blah 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 you know, from people, <laughs> right? And so it always bothered me and troubled me when I would hear, see, or interact with people who seemed to just kind of meander along. There was no intention. There was no focus. There was no purpose to anything they were doing. They just kind of was just doing stuff. And most times, most times, it amounted to nothing. Whatever actions and activities they took amounted to a whole bunch of nothing. It's kind of, it always reminded me of the hamster on the hamster wheel. Man, boy, you ever see a hamster on a hamster wheel, brothers and sisters? Oh, they be going. They be going. It don't even be no food in front of them. It just be going and just be running and just be going and you going. And before you get off that thing, be plenty of tired. The thing that spent around the little spinny wheel will stop. He get off the spinny wheel. He'd be plenty tired, but ain't going nowhere. Still in the same raggedy cage. <laughs> Waiting for somebody to feed. Oh, they could tea to house them. Hello, somebody. You a hamster on a hamster wheel without purpose. Now it's different if the hamster's in the cage and the hamster go, you know what? I like running. I really like running. But I'm not gonna sit here and run on this thing because that thing gonna get me nowhere. You know what I'm gonna do is next time this clown go to change the cage out and switch it up a little bit and with my bedding and stuff, I'm gonna make a break for it. I'm gonna make a break. And all that running I've been doing a little round thing. I, I got my wind up. I got my energy up. I got my, my muscles is right. You know, I got some good speed. I'm feeling loose right now. When he picked me out this cage, I'm making a break for it. I got some purpose. My purpose is to hit the dough. I'm going to try to make a break for the dough and get up out this piece because I think I deserve to be free with the free hamsters. I don't know if there's a such thing, but I want to be out with the free hamsters. Purpose. Now, you can continue to say, no, nah, food's coming. Water's coming, you know, they're going to, you know, clean my environment up from me and I can just run on the wheel and never actually go anywhere, but I can feel like I'm going somewhere. Purpose. Now, I'll tell you right now, uh, the album Miss Louis Farrakhan, you know, uh, said to us 
and continues to say to us that, you know, blessed is the person, the man or woman who finds their purpose, the purpose in life. Now, is it easy to just say, wake up one day, oh, I know my purpose, that's my purpose. No, and most people have, you know, tricked themselves, brother. I'm just saying, most people have tricked themselves into their purpose. Like, I'm tricking myself into what my purpose is. You might like something. You may be like enamored by something. You might have had some experience in life where, yeah, you know, my great aunt was always not well. And I knew I was supposed to be a doctor in my life. <laughs> and it may be true. That may very well be true. But I'll tell you this. One thing some of my mentors told me many, many years ago is that well, this is one of the powerful things. You, this is how you can try to check, do a purpose check, do a quick purpose check. You will do it. For no money, might be your purpose. Might be your purpose. Now, some people do stuff as a hobby for no money. You do it as a hobby. You may be like, I'm color, I color in the coloring books. Uh, you know, I do some knitting. It's a hobby. Okay, cool. You don't get paid for it. You're just doing it. Okay, that may be a hobby. So, if you first thing you might say is check. You can do it for no money. Say, if somebody would say, would you still do this? Rain, shine, day or night. You ain't get no money. Say, yeah, I still do it. Okay, now it still may be hobby, but we check it for purpose now. So now, are you willing to um, uh, sacrifice some stuff that's really important in life in order for you to do it? He said, oh, I don't know about that. See, now, oh, oh, now you're getting away from purpose now. You're saying, oh, that may not be your purpose in life. If you're not willing to sacrifice some stuff, I'm talking about money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about family. Now I'm talking about like you throw more people away, but I'm talking about time you would spend, quality time and, and things you would love to do with your family, with your children, maybe with your spouse, with your mom, with your daddy, and your, whatever it is that you, that you enjoy being with your family, or you want to sacrifice the time. You might not really get to hang out with your children until they in their 20s because you had to sacrifice. Are you willing to give up that? Say, I don't know. Okay, we'll be checking purpose. It's purpose check right now. Now, here's another thing. Do you live, breathe, eat, and sleep? Whatever your thing is, is that what it is for you? Now, I'll give you a quick example of what I'm saying with that. A, I asked the question, it's rhetorical, but it's, it's a question I need you to answer in your life. There was a young man many, many years ago, and I saw him, Brother Bell, you know, he was at the mosque, and he was a young, young brother, and he was like, he came to me, the brother Rodney. You know, I want to, I got this, man, I want to do this film stuff. I'm going to these classes for this film stuff and, and this and that, boom, boom. I'm like, oh, that's dope. That's hot. You know, I'm, I'm excited for him. Like, man, really? He was really fired up about the stuff in the film. He want to do the film stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, that's really, I'm really impressed, man. That's, that's nice. Okay, cool. I said, so what's, what you, what you going to do with it? How you going to, you know, do that? I'm asking him a series of questions and whatnot. This is before I, I was like known as the courage coach. And so, uh, and so I said, well, here's what I'll do, man. I said, really, I see your excitement right now, and this is great. I said, here's what I'll do. Um, I, I, I'm going to build you a top-of-the-line, uh, top high-end computer. I'm going to build it from scratch. I'm going to put all the stuff. Uh, I'll get you the software, everything. I'm going to get the software, everything, so you can do the uh, movie production stuff, and boom. Because you need a high-end computer, boom, boom. This is when I was uh, doing IT stuff and for these corporations and things. And then so, and so he's like, you would? I was like, yeah, brother, and all I want you to do is this. It'd be a small investment for you. You come up with uh, $200 and I'll cover everything else after $200. It was going to cost, you know, eight, $900 to get build this machine for him, right? High end, everything, bells and was top of the line. And so he said, he said, man, you do. I said, brother, you have my word that that's what I'll do. All right. Okay, cool. So you save $200. When you got $200, you come to me, we'll start working out. We'll get to get it going. All right, cool. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Rodney. Okay. And so I saw him maybe a couple of weeks later. I said, man, brother, oh, man, what's going on? He's oh, man, you know, the film you're doing, that film school thing. And he, was, he gave me the, 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 the excited spiel again. He told me about this and that. Oh, cool. I said, well, how you looking on, you know, it's getting the computer going. Oh, man, I, you know, I got just got this job thing and I'm doing, so I'm doing this. And he gave me the thing and said the stuff and the whatever. And most times when people talk, Brother Daryl, well, no, I don't know if you do this, but I do this. I, 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 I listen to some of it. But most of it, it, I just let it go out. I just some of it, I listen to the rest of it. I just delete because most of it is just fluff, fluff and filler stuff. 
like all the filler words and phrases and stuff that's it's really no no gleanable data I'm gonna get out of it. It's not gonna help me get accomplish what you really want done. So I just need the the, the core data and all the other fluffy words. Just drop those off, and then we can get to the point and keep it moving, right? But so I, I've learned a strategy of how to listen effectively for the pieces that matter and delete the stuff that's just miscellaneous stuff, right? And so now watch this. So he was giving me all the stuff and the blah 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 blah. I'm half listening, not really, but okay. Boom. I said, well. I said, all right, well, cool, man. Once you got the $200, you know, boom, let me know. Boom, boom. Okay, cool. Fast forward. About a month later, I seen him again. He comes again with the same excited, oh, blah, blah, man, I'm doing the class stuff and the school. Thing, 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 thing. And I said, brother, well, how are you looking on that $200? Oh, man, you know, well, you know, my white man, you know, and then my, you know, my daughter, she started another school thing. And then, and then, and then, and then, I said, okay. Then I saw him about three months later. He came in with the same excited class spiel. I said, brother, let me stop you right now. So how are we looking on that 200 right there? Oh, brother, I said, Burp, let me stop you right there. Here's where we stop. I said, listen, I don't ever, next time you see me, don't you ever, ever, ever mention to me anything about computers, film school, or anything like that. Just give me the greetings, and we keep it moving. We talk about anything else. I said, because what I realized is you're not serious. You're playing games. You're trying to convince me of your excitement and you really want to do this in your life. I said, but I offered you a deal that, that, that was un, just unreal. Most people wouldn't do that for you. I'm going I'm to I'm pay the bulk. I'm going to pay $800 on a $1,000 computer. You just got to come up with two and you didn't do that? That means you're not serious. Let me give you another one real quick, y'all. Uh, a prior associate of mine, his son, every time I would come by the house, you know, his son wanted to play basketball. His father had played basketball uh, in college, um, and he taught his son, one of his sons to play basketball. And he was really good. He was really good at it. And he was young, too, you know, 9, 10, 8, 11 years old. He really was. And he so, and so every time I come by the house, he'd be playing uh, some maybe some video game, but it'd be some dumb game. Or he'd be watching some Netflix or something like that, some stupid movie or something, or just watching TV. And I said, um, I said, every time I come, I said, B, uh, uh, I thought you was trying to be a basketball. You really want to get in basketball and be a really uh, hot basketball player. I do. I said, no, you don't. He said, yes, I do. I said, no, you don't. Stop lying to me and yourself, man. You don't. You know how I can tell you don't want to be a basketball player? Because I watch what you do. And watching what you do, everything tells me that you're trying to be a movie watcher. You want to be a professional movie watcher. That's what you want to be in your life, a professional movie watcher. See, if you really wanted to play basketball, you'd be, every word coming out your mouth would be basketball. You'd have pictures and stuff on your wall. You know, stats of the players, the coaches, you know, salary caps. You know, the, right now, what's the dynamic, what's the, what's the dimensions of a basketball court? He said, I don't know. I said, that's why I know you don't want to play basketball. How many individual little pop march on a basketball? What's the diameter? What's the radius of a basketball? I don't know. Exactly. That's what I'm saying right there. You don't want to play basketball. You want to be a professional movie watcher. I said, at least if you're going to play bad, bad video games, at least at least let it be a basketball video game. If you're going to watch a movie, let it be basketball movies and shows about basketball. Gosh, man, come on. You know what he did? He switched that up. He looked at me and like, now he was eight, nine, ten years old right then. Every time I came over after that, you know what I saw? He was playing a basketball video game. He was watching basketball flicks and highlight reels, right? He had stats and figures on the wall. He knew players, they stats from college. He knew which coaches played for which team, which college, where they came from. This boy, he was serious about his ball. And I told him, I said, I need you to get deeper. I need you to even know how coaches get hired. How do they hire a water boy? Do you know how the water boys get, boys get hired? Do you even know how that works? No, you got to know that. You got to know every minutia of the business. Because even if you ain't the one bouncing the ball, you got to know all the other stuff because you might end up being the person hiring people who do all the other stuff. You never know. But you want to know every aspect of it. See, about having purpose, brothers and sisters, when you passionate and you all in, people are sick of you talking about it. That's when you live in a purpose-driven reality. Your wealth will not come if you ain't all in. You might have some little bits and pieces of some kind of 
what they think is success or, you know, some kind of result. You get results. You got to get some results. But it will, will it be everything that it's supposed to be? Well, here's the thing. As it has been done, so shall it be done. Right? You've heard the saying, excuse me, do unto others, you have others do unto you. Well, give unto your life as you would have your life give unto you. <laughs> I think they need to add that to the Bible, Brother Daryl. I think they need to add that to the Bible. I'm with I'm the book of LeBron James, the book of LeBron James, LeBron James version of the Bible, Brother Nervous would say, right? <laughs> give unto your life if you have your life give unto you. See, last point, brothers and sisters, there's a law called the law of sowing and reaping. A law of sowing and reaping. As a person sows, the same shall he also reap. But the way that the God actually set it up, that you'll get 10 and 100 fold or return on the sowing of the seed. That's why you want to sow good seeds, good seeds. Of things you want in your life. Now, if you sow disempowered seeds, you get disempowered harvest. So this is about being on purpose. See, a plant, a, a, a farmer don't just throw whatever down in the ground and whatever, just throw some stuff down. No, that's on purpose. We get the rolls right. We we gonna put some corn over here. We gonna have this much. We gonna put some broccoli over there. It's a, it's on purpose. It's not just throw some seeds around. That don't, that's not how that works. You'll kill most of the stuff, be dead. And like watermelon, I'm growing watermelon right now. Watermelons are invasive plants, invasive. They will take over your entire environment because it's a vine. It will shell us up anything you get attached to and, and, and consume any plant it touches. So you don't want to plant that next to your broccoli. At least you have no broccoli and a whole lot of watermelons. Because it'll choke the broccoli out. So when you're living a purpose-driven life, you will create purposeful results and wealth. Nobody wealthy got wealthy haphazardly. Nobody. It wasn't a mistake. It was on purpose. Even if it was accidentally on purpose. <laughs> they had a plan. They worked the plan. They were direct, they were focused, and they were all in. <laughs> you got to live life on purpose, but <laughs> how can you be your purpose if you're not driven by something? What moves you, brother and sister? What do you do every day? What's your every waking thought? What's in your mind? What do people say about you? What do you consume by? Most likely, that's your purpose. And if it's something that you think is not good, if going to the club is your, what you do all the time and all you talk about, then that's your purpose right there. So find out what you focus in your attention on most of the time, and I'll show you what your purpose is. You tell me if that is going to get you the results you really want in your life. I'm Rodney Asad Muhammad. You're a courage coach. Remember, no matter what else you do in life, you must always remember to cultivate the courage to live life on purpose and roar. Peace. All right. All right. On purpose, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much, brother Rodney. Thank you for that message, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, you're hearing it. You're getting what you need. May not be what you want. It's what you and I, we need. More of us need to get off of the hamster wheel. There's a lot of us who can get off, but just won't get off. Because they're comfortable knowing that somebody going to change your environment and keep it clean, right? Knowing that somebody else. See, and the more that somebody else does something for you that affects your life to the same extent, you are you are disempowered. We are disempowered. So thank you so very much, Brother Rodney, for that for that message, that inspirational message on this 147th broadcast here at Black Wealth Empowerment Live. We want to welcome our brother, Brother Michael Carlos Muhammad who is feeding this in live, Brother Rodney, in the Gold Room group. So welcome everybody who's watching us live on the Gold Room group. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're happy that Brother Michael thought enough about this platform and about our message here at BWE to go ahead and just share it and link you directly in to the Gold Room uh, Facebook group. And that's what it's about, brothers and sisters. See, he did that on purpose. That couldn't be done 
accidentally. Brothers and sisters, see, you've heard from Brother Rodney. That what you need to hear to get your spirit revved up. Right? To, 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 to start looking at the man in the mirror. That's why he uses these different analogies about the basketball player and the hamster. Because the hardest thing for a human being to see is himself. So he has to see himself through other examples outside of himself so he can see, wow, I wonder if I'm doing that. Am I like the hamster? Am I like somebody say I want to be, but not being, not doing? But since we're going to get into the last part of tonight's message, which is the motivational part, meaning now we got to do something. We got excited. We got motivated. Our head is clearer now after hearing from Brother Rodney inside. Now it's time to move into action. A purpose-driven wealth strategies. Purpose. What is your motivation? What is your why? And they say your why has to make you cry. Your why has to get down into to the emotional area of your being to where it stirs something up in you. That to give you that drive and force that gets you out of that state of inertia and gets you into motion towards whatever it is after purpose driven, purpose driven health, purpose driven mindset, purpose driven driven education, purpose driven something. We're talking about purpose driven wealth. So why? What is your motive? Why do you want to be wealthy? And to the extent that your wealth is actually rooted in something, rooted in something valuable beyond yourself, rooted in something that will serve beyond yourself, we are tapping in to the God, the universal source power that will give us all the driving force we need to accomplish anything else after that in any unlimited amount. Being it wealth, health, happiness, love, it doesn't matter. And then you need a strategy. What are the strategies? What are the plans of action? Because we can have a purpose. It can be driven. It can be for wealth or whatever. But without a plan of action, brothers and sisters, Without a strategy, we won't go far too fast. And time will run out with a whole lot of purpose, a whole lot of drive. But without a plan, we won't accomplish much of wealth or anything else. Since we hear wealth, we think money. Let's, let's, that's the easiest thing to quantify. Quantify. So let's talk about what are some what are some of the plans of actions, Daryl? Can I can I take? Right. Not in reverse, not to get wealth and then the wealth is going to drive me and the driving is going to give me purpose. No. It's the other way around. See, most people have it backwards. I'm going to go after this money and we put a big money in our mind. Right. And it's the money that's going to drive me. And then and then once I get the money, then then now I can be able to give more and I, I can become a philanthropist and, and I can start foundations and and and, and I can start nonprofits. You got it backwards. Your purpose to do all those things should drive you and I to do W-I-T, whatever it takes to get the wealth that we need. But it's going to take plan of action. So what is the plan of action on a monetary level? Well, brother, says first you have to, you have to start where you are. See, the hamster knew he was in a cage. He knew that will wasn't going to get him freedom, but he desired freedom. So he put together a plan. So our plan to build, we have to know where we are financially, brothers and sisters. We have to know what our financial condition is, our financial reality is. See, the very interesting thing, I learned this from David M. Monite, one of my mentors in network marketing. He talks about how you have to, you have to focus on your future but still live in the present. You have to focus and visualize on where you want to be, your destination in life, health, wealth, love, happiness, and success. But then you have to be in the present 
to push through your present situation to get to that destination. See, that's hard to do. But the extent that we're good at doing it, and the coach, courage coach can help you with that specifically. The extent that we can formulate that and understand that and crystallize that in our minds, the extent that we can reach our desired destination. What a lot of people do, they just dream. They they fantasize or romanticize, oh, how it would be, but doing nothing in the present. So we have to assess where we are financially. We have to see where we are in all the different dynamics of finance. And I won't go into them. You start your study. You be about the purpose and you'll know what those many things are. So you have to know where we are. Right. And then once we see where we are, then we have to make up our minds that I'm going to use all that I have right now. Don't worry about what you don't have. One of my mentors said, take what you don't have. I mean, take what you have to get what you don't have. But don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you got. Focus on what you have to get what you don't have. So now once you assess what you have financially, your credit, your income, your expenses, your debt, the whole nine yards. Once you realize, that, okay, now this is what I got to work with. Now, let me use everything I have for that one sole purpose. See, the coach can help you with that. See, we have a lot of purposes, but you got to be able to crystallize that into one purpose that includes all those other multiple of purposes. Myself, my family, my religion, my spirituality, my, my emotion, my okay, you just, just crystallize that, have the coach to help you to crystallize that into one purpose that's all inclusive. So now you got your, you see where you are financially. Now you say, okay, I'm going to use everything I have for my purpose. You have to determine your purpose, brothers and sisters. What is the purpose that I'm, I'm, I I want to build wealth? What is the purpose that I want to be financially successful? What is the reason why that is that, that I would even go through the painstaking efforts of fighting against what everybody else is doing to live my full God-given financial purpose. Assess where you are. Know what you got to work with. Determine what your purpose is. And use what you have financially. Everything you use financially towards that purpose. So now that means every action, financial decision has to be a conscious one, not an emotional one. A conscious one that you ask yourself, would this transaction work towards my purpose? If so, how? If not, why not? See, it's something that you have to incorporate into your daily life. It's not an off and on switch. It's an on and on switch. You got to incorporate this into your life, brothers and sisters, so it becomes a fraction of a second thought. The Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan said, we're a culmination. Our life is a culmination of the decisions that we've made. Thought. What decision? Go there, go there. Make this, buy this, don't buy this, spin this, don't spin this. And the more you do it, the quicker you, you'll be in making the right uh, decision, financial decisions. But you have to have a clear, determined purpose that you're going to use all your financial resources for. See, you got to sit down, brothers and sisters, with a pen and pad, paper and pad, a uh, uh, pen, pa- pen and pa- pad. See, now you got to write this stuff out. See, we just want to go make money. We just want to count one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I got hundred thousand dollars. No, you got to write down. All right. You got to get some thoughts on a piece of paper. It's financial now. You got to get some thoughts on a piece of paper. All right. Got it. Got my purpose. It's big enough to drive me towards the size of the wealth that I want. See, if you're trying to haul dirt, you need an engine that has enough force and power to haul that dirt up the mountain. That's what that's what the striving to be free is. 
You got to have enough. You got to have enough engine power. Enough purpose driven power to get up that hill. Hill call freedom, financial freedom, wealth. That's done by your purpose. See, once you have your purpose. And it drives you to do the things you need to crystallize your purpose, to see what your resources are, to see what you have financially to work with. To build wealth, to leave an inheritance. Then the leaving of the inheritance, the building of the wealth. See, that destination is what pulls you. What gives you the drive to pull you. So you got two things working for yourself when you understand what we're talking about. You got your internal drive, the drive from where you are in the direction, and then you have the destination pulling you towards itself. Come on, Courage Coach. You can, you can preach on that one. But you have to put together a strategy. But once you do the purpose, the driven, the destination being wealth, you stay in that, that state of being beingness and then when you go out to formulate the plan you get a little, for, a little bit from black wealth empowerment you get a little bit from the courage coach you get a little bit from here and there see now the strategy now the plan of action starts forming there's no reason for a plan of action to form without a purpose Without you driving that purpose, that purpose is just dormant in your life. Like the purpose was dormant in the basketball player's life that the courage coach told you. His purpose, well, you know, he wanted to play basketball. But he had no plan of action. Coach gave him a plan of action. Well, you need to know this. You need to know this. You need to know this. And seeing that, ex that excited him and that fueled his purpose, that gave him the driving force he needed. To now accomplish wealth, now accomplish becoming a respected basketball player. See, that don't sound financial, brothers and sisters, but it's very much financial. See, we got to get out of the mind of the collective normalness that's not building wealth, that's not living on purpose, and is driven to do other things. That's the power of black wealth empowerment, brothers and sisters. Our purpose is to prick your conscious, to wake us up and raise that consciousness up to another level. Because it's time now, brothers and sisters. All we have is the time that God has given us, and we never know when that's going to end. So that's why you have to live on purpose. You got to be serious about this life. Like they say, you got to be about this life. So we hope, brothers and sisters, you got something from our message today. We know that if you came with something on your heart, something on your mind, and you watched us this far, we know that you got what you came here to get. That's the only reason why you stayed as long as you stayed. But and sisters, we want you to Pick up your activity here at Black Wealth Empowerment. There's not too, there's not really much more that the Courage Coach and I can do. The rest is on you. You have to be about this, but you have to be on purpose about everything in your life. God has programmed your heart to beat. You don't have to think about that. Program your lungs to inhale and exhale. You don't have to think about that. Program your mind to function, your brain to function. And to control the rest of your organ so you can live on purpose. But that's a choice that he gives us. And that's a choice we should choose every second of the day. And we're here on Sundays for this hour of power just to do our little part. Because an hour is just a little in a larger scheme of things. The rest is up to you, brothers and sisters. Go on the private loose of exclusive Facebook group, share share uh, with us your, your successes, things that you're getting from this broadcast, things that had, what this broadcast has done for you, because it's doing some things now. You just need to share it. All right? 
So with that being said, let's roll, roll it over to the Courage Coach for some si final words, and we're going to get out of here because the hour of power is just about up. Courage Coach. Yes, sir, Brother Daryl. Thank you, Brother Daryl, for that word. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, one thing that that you said that's just really, that's, oh, we could have we could have did a two-hour one today. We probably could have went three in on this one right here. Uh, but Brother Daryl, Brother Sister, when he was talking about going up the hill, you got to have what they call they call it torque. They call it torque. And I don't know if you've ever been in a vehicle and you start going up a hill or something right there. And just like you don't have enough power, you want to switch to a lower gear. You switch to a lower gear and it seems to give you a little more uh to get on up there, to get on, get moving and get going in there. Well, that's what happens when you have a gear. That's when you're engaging something at a, at a, at a, just a deeper level. And so really in our lives, to take it away from the um, – from the you know the car analogy into our lives, we gotta lock in, we gotta engage in the source from which all things come. The 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 deeper we can lock in and engage and get in gear with the source of all things, right? Now, whatever name you call the creator, that's on you. You work that out. But that's what Brother Daryl was, uh, was, was getting at and showing you. And I, I pray that everybody got it. I know I received that. I received that. And so if we're, we really want to get to something, we got to engage, brothers and sisters. And so we pray that this broadcast helped you see the need, see something in you that's already been there, but maybe it, it kind of excited it and kind of you know, pushed it a little bit, woke it up or something like that. And right now, Really, it, I'll just say it like this. I'll wrap this up with this. Anytime you really want to do that thing, be that great, whatever, accomplish that, whatever it is, fill in the blank, you just got to just decide. You just got to just once and for all decide, this is what I'm going to do. Period. Not if, blah, 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 blah. Not, well, if this, see, when you throw the if factor, that means you ain't really all in. You say, this is what I'm going to do. Period. That's it. Now everything else is just negotiating stuff. How to move around and not, you know, do your thing. And so, brothers and sisters, I pray that this broadcast helped you to see that right now it's on you. If your life is a failure, if your life is not what you want it to be, guess whose fault it is? Yours. If you don't have everything you want in life, guess whose fault it is? Yours. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, if you want me to say it's somebody else, I'm not going to say that. It's you. It's me. It's us. But brother, we ain't got no unity. That guess, tag, guess whose problem that is? It's our problem. It's us. We the problem. <laughs> we've always been the problem. For trillions of years, we've been a problem. Now that we know that, let's be about some other activities that get us away from the things we've complained about and get us closer to the things we really desire in life. All right. So brother Dale, uh, one thing I want to say, this is on the, on the air right now. One thing I, I want to do is we want to bring some people on. I'm going to find some people. I know you may know some people where we can talk about uh, land ownership. Cause I was telling a young man the other day, I said, you can buy a house in a subdivision, but you own what's on top. You don't own what's underneath. And so they'll sell you the property on top. But if there's gold underneath that ground, it ain't yours. It's the landowner, the land developer's gold. If it's oil underneath the house you bought, unless you got the rights to the whole, the lot itself you bought. And you, so you got to be real careful with some of these real estate deals and stuff. And Brother Daryl can go deep into that. Or am I buying the land and the house on top or am I just buying the house on top? Because <laughs> That's what condos and all the lofts and stuff. You you got, yeah, that most space is yours. <laughs> but the ground underneath the space, you don't got, right? And so we, we, we want to do something on that because, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of land out there for sale. And, brother, I think we need to have a, like a, a two-hour, bring some people on, do a two-hour about buying land. There's land for sale. My wife and I are looking at some land purchases here in the state. You know, and just buying up acres and acres. Just if you just sit on it, pay the property taxes up for a year, and just be on it. And you know, we got always got a place to go stay if you got to go live on your land. But we want to do that. So, brothers and sisters, I hope you jot some stuff down. Get in the group. Let us know what you learned, what you need to know more of. We want to get deeper into this subject about purpose, right? Purpose. 
So if we can, if you can get to that, ah, you got great stuff coming. So brother Dale, swing it back over to you. Peace, everybody. Go hard in the paint this week. It's your week. All right. Thank you, brother Rodney, for those final words. Absolutely. See, the sky's the limit. Whatever we want to do, brothers, says, whatever you want to do, this platform is for you. This is not for me. This platform is for you. Whatever you want to do, you put suggestions in there. We'll make it happen. You think you'll be a good guest? Well, come on. There's enough room for everybody. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on. Let's do it. Eliminate the excuses. Brothers and sisters, thank you for being here for this 147th broadcast here at Black Wealth Empowerment Live. We're so happy that you decided to be with us, but it doesn't stop here. The beginning is not the end. The beginning is the beginning and the end and when, when it's the, no more. When you can't do any more, even if you wanted to, that's the end. But until then, we got work to do, brothers and sisters. So roll up your sleeve. We need you. We need you to help make this platform what, is, what it should be. So share this stream. Come back next week. Go into the private elusive exclusive Facebook group and leave a comment. Let us know what you got. Come on. Come on, brothers and sisters. The folks are out here making things happen right underneath our nose. What about you? You say there's no unity? Here I am. There's Brother Rodney. And there's you. So reach out to us. God willing, we'll see you next week. For another broadcast, share this stream. No matter when you're watching it or where you're watching it, you can share this stream, stream, and you should. That's your payback. That's your admission to get this. Wow. This, 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 this was so powerful. Like Courage Coach said, we could have done two hours. We could have broke this thing down into the to the grainy old level. Brothers and sisters, thanks for being here. As always, God willing, we'll see you at the top, not from the top, because you, your family, but most importantly, our black community deserve your very best. All right, until next time, take care. God bless.